Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Edit Place. And today we're gonna to be talking about color grading the footage from the DJI Ronin 4D. I just released the new video on my main channel all about this camera yesterday. And on this one, I kind of wanted to take you behind the scenes into the project and talk about color grading that I did for this camera. But let's jump right into it. Throughout this video, we basically have a mix between the Ronin 4D and the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. Uh, pretty much the only stuff with the Pocket 6K is going to be on this, my main A-roll angle. Pocket 6K Pro is going to be some of the B-roll. But if you notice, I kind of have a new style on this video. It's a little darker, a little moodier. And that is all thanks to a brand new Motion VFX pack that I have absolutely fallen in love with. You can check it out on the link uh, in the description below. It's called Emlet Classy. They literally just released it like last week or something. And I've fallen in love. And I'll be honest, there are some general rules of thumb for color grading and processing. I threw that all out for this video and just created some styles that I very much enjoyed. And if we take a look at my node tree here, you can see it doesn't really follow proper whatever, proper workflow. I did not do the corrections first and then add a grade. I basically went right into it with this specific LUT that I, I just love so much. So I'm actually going to do a new version and we're going to delete all these nodes and I'll show you how I built that look from scratch. So this is what it looks like straight out of camera. Again, pocket 6K. I'm gonna add back in some nodes. And if I go back under my LUTs, MLUT Classy, the one I used for like the majority of these shots was called Toned Chic. If I add that to this, oh, I love it. I love it. If, you, if you're into these sort of tones, then you're going to love this LUT and it makes the entire pack worth it. But we're still very low in exposure even though I love a good low exposure, it's a, it's a little bit too dark. So let's go in, correct this a little bit. We're just going to add some gain, bring up our levels. I'm going to add back in a little bit of contrast, take our lift down just a touch, play with our midtones, see where we want to leave everything at. I like to bring down the highlights a touch as well. So that's definitely looking better. I want to separate me some more. And so I'm actually going to go in and add a mask and a circle mask. We're going to stretch it out and basically make our own vignette here. Feather it out till there's no tomorrow. Going to invert the mask and then head over to our curves. Just select the Y, which is going to bring our overall lighting down. And you can see that it basically just adds a vignette around me. If I turn that on and off, there's before and after, add some separation. If you wanna go real crazy, add an outside node, and that is going to give you an opposite vignette. And so for the outside node, I'm actually going to bring up, because this is raising what's inside the other mask, so me, and bring down just a touch the most slightest of S curves out there just to add a little bit more contrast. You can see what it did to me before and after. And this is looking pretty good. Maybe I'll play around with saturation. Honestly, it doesn't need it a bunch. If it's a little too green, we can take that down a little bit, add some magenta tint. And yeah, there is our before and there is our after. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below and let's find another clip to adjust. All right. So here is when I went to shoot with Josh Yeo from Make Art Now and I actually made a uh, mistake or <laughs> honestly just the embargo time was close and I was I was down to the, the last couple of minutes with this edit. And so I just accepted it. Obviously, it's uh, you, you cannot notice the issue, right? But we shot at the same time. But this was on his Sony camera. And then I threw in my Pocket 6K Pro for a second angle. And you can see that the color rendition, I he converted this footage. So I think there's a LUT on his Sony that's not applied to my Blackmagic or whatever it is. But we can make this match way better. And so in this case, I'm going to match his Sony camera. So I'm going to match reference wipe and then we'll go to this angle. And if I turn things on here, you can see that, yeah, we're not we're not dealing with the same colors. And this is actually a way simpler fix than you would imagine. 
I'm just gonna add a couple nodes and I'm going to use the color warper tool and I'm simply going to grab the blue background and we're just gonna slide this thing into the greens until we, we find as close as a match to his uh, Sony's camera. May not be perfect. Too far, too far. All right, so now if we swipe back and forth between them, it's not perfect. Ours is still actually honestly a bit too green. That's better. If we look at where it started, it definitely is more of a match. And if I were to turn this off and yeah, just a little bit of color boost almost. It's compressed footage, so we're getting a little bit of color banding right there. But if I were to save this as a still real quick and let's apply it to this clip and we'll see how they jump back and forth. Definitely less jarring than the blue. Like that is just very jarring. Again, I think it's a little hard because it's compressed, although on his Sony, you still see the the banding. The only thing I would say is now skin tones look super funky. There we go, that's it's a bit more normal. So literally fix this with two color warping nodes. I probably could spend some more time on it, but for a super quick fix, that would have looked like it matched way better. Again, what do you guys think? Let me know. All right, so now I wanna talk about this clip right here, which actually is shot in the codec, basically the highest codec that you can do on this camera, Pro is 444XQ. And that's why that title's there because this was kind of just a test shot. You can see everything, all the other settings for the camera were at 17 millimeters. And currently this is just with the Rec. 709 applied to it. We can see here that noise looks very uh, good. There's a little bit of color noise, but you can see in controlled environments at 800 native ISO, it looks really, really solid. What I want to do, which we didn't really do in that video is see how far we can push it. Uh, so I want to start with kind of this base grade and then I just want to see where we can go with it. And so I want to pull a couple different looks out of it. And so the first one, let's go with like a really clean kind of commercial look, which is going to give us a lot more contrast in the image. We really just want to bring out everything we can. Obviously ignore these little clipped spots. That is the text. Just so there's anyone wondering about that. And I'm going to up the saturation a bit. Again, I don't love the skin tones that DJI kind of pulls out of the image right off the bat. It feels a little too magenta to me. But then if I, if I tint it green, it doesn't feel right either. Like I can't can't put my finger on it. Polar global ever so slightly. All right, so that's just with the Rec. 709, and this is kind of adding a bunch of contrast. And then we're gonna do our same mask vignette just to really pull some separation out. So zoom out a bit. And if you guys are wondering where I learned a lot of these tricks, it's from uh, an awesome colorist, Kazi. He has a fantastic colorist course that I bought years ago. I'll leave that linked in the description as well if you wanna check it out. I still need to go back through and, and kind of relearn some things, but he, he's fantastic. Can't tell if we are uh, inverted or not. So let's just see. Yeah, we're, we're good. Pull this down, add an outside node in, do a slight little S curve. And there's log and there's fine. And so there's a commercial look and let's see a, uh, a more film look we can pull out. So here, I'm actually going to try that M classic. I'm going to try my, my toned chic Oh, I get to a lot of you. This probably looks like, just like oh, it looks so muddy right now. But the second I add contrast to this, it's going to look so good. Let's pull up our gain here. A lot of it's just feathering controls. I could probably go into my HDR wheels and go even more, but we're getting there. Now, I wish that it, this was in ProRes RAW or some sort of real RAW control because then adjusting the color temperature would, would add a lot more to it, I think. I can't decide. I, th I think this LUT calls for a warmer image. Adding some magenta in. It feels almost like very Last of Us. I'm gonna try pivoting the contrast. Yeah. Maybe color boost a bit. Oh, that's, I'm liking that. I'm like that. It's very moody. We're, again, we're going for a film sort of look here. Add in our two vignettes again. This one needs, I think, a bigger S curve to really create some contrast. Yeah, that's it. That's what it needed. I'm also going to add some mid-tone detail. Oof. 
don't know about you guys, but I love, love this look. Again, it's not for every project, but mm. I, think, I think I'm going to add this to the uh, power grades. Power grade that. Boom. Now it can be accessible in other projects if you didn't know what a power grade was. I like that a lot. So there's kind of a quick rundown on color grading with the DJI Ronin 4D. What do you guys think overall? I think noise levels are very good, both at 800 and 5,000, the native ISOs. There's definitely some color noise that I get in the skin tones, which I don't love. But the beautiful thing is they can update kind of their color science with uh, firmware updates and kind of really maybe new LUTs. They can really kind of refine that over time with the same camera um, because the hardware of this camera is so good. So if you want to see my full video, talking about the camera check that out if you want to see what LUTs I used or learn more about color grading make sure you get subscribed here thanks for watching see you guys in the next video let's get back to the edit